The Spirit of World Business Chapter 1 Global Society's Guide Global Society's Introduction The world is getting smaller. World trade was once considered the realm of the giant multinational corporations but is now done by everyone, even little retail websites that sell product all over the world. It's simply the way of the world these days, to expand to global markets. You could probably read through the information in the Department of Commerce's Trade Information Center website, ita.doc.gov slash tick, every night for a year and still not get through it. World trade runs the world if you think about it. Simply walk through a supermarket or a shopping mall and look at the tags of some of the products to see where they're made. Most of us don't realize the incredible amount of motion going on all the time as goods and services are transported all over the world to end up neatly packaged on our store shelves at reasonable prices. It is indeed a miracle. Whereas once before, you just competed with companies in your own country or in your own continent, nowadays, you're competing with countries halfway around the world, Japan and Germany are the number two and three economies, for a piece of the global pie. We, in North America, have to be exceptional if we hope to counteract the great advantages emerging nations have with their cheap labor and absence of environmental laws which makes production so much easier overseas for general products that don't require skilled labor so if these types of factories and production are to stay in America and not be relegated to China or India, we had better be damn good and efficient at what we do otherwise we will become a consumer nation buying all of our manufactured stuff from China, Japan, India, and Mexico. The potential is there for a North American company to expand to the global marketplace if we want to. We have the one great advantage of the best technology the world has to offer, a great infrastructure and a well-developed transportation system such that we can ship anything we want anywhere in a matter of a week or two at the latest or we can fly it there by air cargo in a day or two. This is our competitive edge not to mention that we have abundant natural resources, at least in Canada. In general, there are two markets. A consumer market, making products for mass consumption by the public at large. An industrial market, making products for business and industry so they can do what they do to produce goods and serves. As far as the industrial market goes, North America gets the lion's share of the world market share because most of the world's technology is located here, was developed here, is invented here and we have the greatest availability of skilled labor here. As far as the consumer market goes, because of volume of sales, good products can be made anywhere and sold anywhere. The consumer market goes from beer to TVs to iPods to pop music. Whoever makes the best product and sells it at the lowest price wins which is why the Asian countries seem to be winning this game. They know how to make good products cheaply. There are your two bottom line factors right there. Quality. Low price. How can North Americans compete with this? For one thing, we can stick with what we do best and make our money there, namely industry, high technology, medical equipment, agriculture and natural resources. For the consumer market, we, as individual companies, have to focus on our individual products, try to make them as good as we can as efficiently as we can to capture niche markets worldwide. This is what it's called, niche marketing, find what you're good at, do it the best you can and sell it worldwide. At one time, after World War II, America made virtually everything on the planet. They sent a few business experts, I believe the one guy's name was Deming, over to Japan and 20 years later, the Japanese were mass producing most of the world's electronic components. Good companies eventually develop subsidiaries in other countries, branch plants where they basically replicate what they do at the mother company thus alleviating the hassles of exporting thereby winning favor from the country itself for investing there. We mustn't forget that easily over half of the world doesn't come close to having near the technology we have in North America. I read that in Eastern Europe they don't even have a flow of uninterrupted electricity. That's how much more advanced we are over them. The market is wide open if we want it but don't underestimate the current have-nots. In 20 years, China and Eastern Europe could put a major dent in our economies like what happened in Argentina. 
They stopped producing their own goods since it seemed cheaper to buy from elsewhere until the economy got trashed then the workers themselves took over the dilapidated companies and put them back into business. It was the only way they could survive. There's a concept called world product mandate slash focused manufacturing slash missions or centers of excellence which means that some corporations look for a product or a small set of products that they research extensively, produce well, modify into a number of sizes and through economies of scale, producing large numbers of it, are able to sell at a low price. Then they get their sales team together and go worldwide looking for markets. World product mandates are earned not given. It's a competitive world out there. You have to offer good products at inexpensive prices in order to win the global marketing game or hold a monopoly like Microsoft does with its software. Another way in is to either create a new product or improve a common existing product enough such that it captures interest and market share. In 10 years, DVDs will have virtually replaced video. In 20 years, iPods will replace the cassette tape and even music DVDs. There will be gadgets with little hard drives of music content in them. If you're quick with delivery after an order is placed, that's a plus too. From another marketing point of view, good companies nowadays search for whatever products they need on a worldwide scale. Often, they do the search over the internet. It could be anything from washers for nuts and bolts to airplane engines for airplanes they manufacture. They have their list of manufacturers from some directory of manufacturers like the Thomas Register, thomasregister.com, then go down the list looking for the best deal. This is why you as a company worthy of substance must get listed in every manufacturer's directory and get a website using what you produce as key terms with the qualifier manufacturer in them. And don't forget to translate your website into a couple of foreign languages that think might be good markets for your products. Some guy I know never imagined that Germany would be a good market for his golden oldie records is but it is. If you do this and advertise in trade magazines that go worldwide, they will come to you looking for business. If they come to you and offer you an order to ship them 1 million washers a quarter centimeter smaller than you usually make them with a Chinese symbol imprinted on them, don't be a fool and say that's not what you do. Take the order, do the best you can. It will lead to other orders with the same outfit then other orders to the same country once the word gets around that company Z in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada makes great washers at great prices and will even put Chinese markings on them. The world's major industries are as follows. All of these industries operate without borders on a global scale. This is where a good company focuses its efforts, to be a supplier to the world rather than just in one limited neck of the woods. Aircraft parts and engines. Automobiles. Beverages. Chemicals. Coal. Crude petroleum. Electrical products. Engineering. Farm machinery. Food, basic, and snack. Furnishing, home appliances. High-tech, computers, internet, PDAs, etc. Industrial machinery. Iron and steel. Medical equipment. Metal fabrications. Metal ores. Motor vehicle engines and auto parts. Natural gas. Non-metallic mineral products. Office machines. Petroleum products. Printing and publishing. Rubber products. Scientific equipment. Telecommunications equipment. Textiles, clothing, carpets, canvas, etc. Tobacco products. Transportation equipment. Trucks. Wood and paper. Wood products, furniture. The wave of the future. In order to grow globally, network locally. Build relationships with the locals. The global economy has made goods, services, and people mobile, available almost anywhere at any time, given people everywhere a wide variety of choices of consumer goods and made us, as the human race, both convergent at one level as a bunch of capitalist, white bread, generic consumers, and pluralistic in another in that we live with all kinds of other types of people in our communities both religion-wise and culture-wise and accept it because that's the way of the world these days, everybody and
everything has infiltrated to everywhere on the planet. Customers are basically the same way everywhere. They want good service and value at a good price. The political and cultural boundaries don't matter as much as a good deal. Your goal is to set a world standard for whatever it is you do and if you're a multinational company, to do it on a worldwide scale. The media has made us all alike on a corporate, pop culture, capitalist level. CNN and MTV are available in over 150 countries each so there is a capitalist pop culture corporate vibe out there that melds all the different world cultures into one unified whole which is great for capitalism but at the same time, the power is in the hands of a few multinationals which a lot of people resent while a lot of people sell their souls for material prosperity so in one sense, it's a big mess. For issues of political correctness, we can't be too pro-global marketing nor too much against it because each side has its good and bad points. Some extremists hate American corporate capitalism so much that they commit terrorist acts against it and its so-called imperialistic reach in attempting to take over the world as they say. If you're expanding into another country, most people will, will welcome the influx of new consumer goods but some will look upon you as a heathen for polluting the purity of their culture and religion so be ready for reactions to you and your company from both sides of the ideological spectrum. These two sides are sometimes referred to as internationalism versus nativism. There will always be pro-capitalist corporate people and anti-capitalist corporate people wherever you go but the truth is that capitalism always wins in the end because people want material things. Some will say American products are superior. Some will say they are inferior. Both sides will be right in certain cases. America is not superior in everything. Be ready to swallow some pride when you see how efficient, well-educated, orderly, and productive they are in some countries. Keep your mouth shut. Don't be arrogant. Learn from them and their ways. Don't try to drown out their cultural identity with your new capitalist products coming onto the scene. Just try to enhance the lives they already live by unobtrusively providing the best goods and services you can. To my way of thinking, consumer goods and services are inert things. They have no ideology to them. The businesses that make and sell them are just trying to help people live better lives and not intrude anywhere beyond that. This should be your attitude as a global marketer. You're not there to make the citizens a bunch of American pop culture clones. You're there to help them live better lives and that's it. Foreign workers are the same as everywhere. Above all else, they want some semblance of employment security for their efforts, to know they can count on having that job in 10 years if they still want to be there. All successful businesses in the global village become part of the community they're in rather than isolate themselves from it. Business is built on the back of networking so once again, it's all about people-to-people -people relationships. When going global, think locally. Hire affable foreigners to work side by side with you in your foreign business. According to a synthesis of several books I read on the subject, the few keys to worldwide business success are as follows. Develop original world-class, quality products and services that can sell anywhere. Have a skilled workforce that can manufacture these products and wants to. Positive work ethic. Connect with people in different cultures, employees, customers and the local gentry, the elitists, the politicians, other business owners. Bring them into your corporate fold. Provide training and education to your workers and to the community at large by participating in some kind of social programs. Help the community. Be open to their ideas on how to better your company. Most world cultures value the family above all so treat the family respectfully. Get a few foreigners to come over to the home country and work at the main headquarters in order to engender a two-way feel about it, you going over there, they coming here to live. The more involved you get and the more connections you make, the better off you will be in your new country. Build bridges. Respect differences. Teach and learn. Help everyone win. Give a little bit. Compromise. Based on the books I've scanned on global marketing of which there are many because it's a cool, emerging topic in the realm of business these days, the overwhelming consensus among them was almost always the same, customers are the same everywhere. 
treat them well like you want to be treated. Try to standardize your business operations worldwide but give them slack for their own personal cultural idiosyncrasies. As a hypothetical example, an American fast food franchise allows their employees to wear turbans at work and since the cow is sacred and not eaten by Hindus, they have come up with veggie burgers and other local foods to substitute for the traditional American burgers and fries. This is how simple it is. I've read reams of books about global marketing and they psychobablize it to death but it's really not much different selling in Smallsville, USA to selling in the Ukraine. Granted, the infrastructure is different. It's harder to get immediate phone service, a number of reliable, competitive suppliers, running water and a few other things but things are basically the same. Kids want ice cream, teenagers want to look cool, the old man wants disposable razors, DVD players and adult videos and mom wants gadgets to make housekeeping easier. Offer a good deal with good service and they will buy. Minimize the use of lawyers. Be more face to face about it. The spirit of the people. Show people hope for a prosperous future. World trade is not just about going to other countries and either selling stuff off the boat or building a factory there. World trade can be conducted without leaving your hometown. Why is it that some towns seem able to attract successful companies from all over the world to come to their town and set up routes, a new factory, a new research center, a warehouse, shipping facility, etc. These things all add up to jobs for the locals and big bucks for the local economy with the multiplier effect which is that the more money generated through new business, the more money everybody makes and the more they spend. Why are these cities, towns, and regions able to attract more business development more so than others? Some of this is due to natural factors like the weather, a good river, good harbor, or port but the main thing is the attitude of the local government, business community and the people to want new business development in the area. The intangible factor that makes all countries that are leaders in world trade great even if they're small such as Japan, Singapore, Korea, Taiwan, etc., is a sense of common purpose from the top all the way down to the worker. This is sometimes called the bootstraps approach to business. The government says we want to vitalize the economy and move into the modern age, it pumps money into these things while promoting technology and trade and with everybody on board united for a common purpose, success is in the air. It's all about the spirit of the people united for a common cause. Everything is interrelated and this includes the mood and prosperity of a particular community or country. The overwhelming attitude anywhere influences the attitudes of others. If you get most people thinking global success, they will be globally successful. Sure, all the little things add up like the environment, wages, research, publicity, infrastructure, taxes, government support, communication network, the freedom and democracy of the country, etc. But the undeniable fact is that when governments ally with their academic, business and labor sectors to promote economic growth and world trade, magical things happen. Entrench this concept of modernization and technological growth into the culture. Make it easy for people to start companies. Develop a top-notch education infrastructure. Reward students who excel in business and science courses. Offer a society where successful people who work hard get to enjoy a great lifestyle with lots of consumer goods and fun things to do. Encourage everybody to get with the program which is to work hard and enjoy the benefits. You must be aggressive about promoting success on a societal level if you really want it. Advertise on TV. Center your news stories about it. Books about economic development are at hashtag 306.36, hashtag 338.971 or HC 115-120 and HD 4904 at the library. The conditions for a prosperous society 1. It doesn't matter whether you're a town, a state, province, or country. The means to attract investors and develop economically are all the same. Study the recent winners of the prosperous society game like Ireland, South Korea, Japan, Singapore, and Taiwan and learn from them. In my opinion, the basic building blocks of a prosperous society are as follows. Have a free, democratic country with a free media and equal opportunity for all to get ahead through hard work if they want to. 
an aggressive, pro-business, pro-expansion attitude. Pro-business development government. Pro-technology government, supportive of both hardware and information technology slash IT. The attitude by the government that globalization, business, manufacturing, and consumerism are all inherently great things for society. The government must create programs for business development at all levels from small to big, offering tax breaks, loans, business education, personal mentoring, and grants. Low taxes on business and people in order to encourage business development and the multiplier effect in the economy which means that the more money people have, the more they spend which gives someone else money to spend so the cycle is repeated over and over again. Low interest business loans. Minimum bureaucracy in starting and running a business. Minimal safety, environmental and health regulations. Get all levels of government, local, state and federal, working together on the same page. Make it a simple process to start a business in terms of getting licenses. Create progressive business communities, in effect, large industrial park-like areas where many companies can set up shop with nearby communities where all these people live such that they socialize and share ideas with each other. Pride in the home country. You want the economy and business as free as possible except when it comes to criminal behavior. Make your businesses accountable for their business by having tough laws regarding negligence, low-quality Chinese products, deceiving the public, pilfering money, dishonest business practices, shoddy accounting, i.e. Nortel, Enron, etc. Don't treat white-collar crooks lightly. Throw them in jail for years at a time. Good education system geared for the business and technology world as opposed to artsy subjects starting in elementary school. Women are an untapped resource. Bring them into business and work at all levels from the tradeswoman to the executive. Develop a positive work ethic for the country proclaiming that work is good for personal prosperity and good for the soul when you love what you do and have pride in it. Show the benevolent side of government by using the money made through economic prosperity to help the poor, disabled, homeless and older people of the community. This helps foster a community bond. Pay educated, skilled workers well. Treat workers like gold in general. Happy workers do great work. Make it easy for skilled workers and business investors to immigrate into your country. Solid infrastructure in such things as electricity, sewage, roads, rail, airports, port, communications, telephone, internet, etc. Encourage world trade, both exporting and bringing in foreign investors. Don't be antagonistically aggressive with other countries. Try to befriend them and partner up in some ventures for mutual benefit. The less trade laws the better. Free trade is best. Commitment to manufacturing as much of the local needs as possible without importing. Reward inventors, innovators, and ideas people with grants and awards. Give tax breaks for research and development. Have a TV show with an inventor's contest. You invest in the best ideas. Encourage venture capital. Start a national VC network. Encourage home companies to go multinational and expand worldwide. Develop a family and entertainment-oriented culture to keep the workforce happy. Good health care system. Develop recreation and entertainment facilities for the people to relax after work. The conditions for a prosperous society too. The two major things you need in order to attract investors are a good infrastructure with both technology utilities, transportation, communications, energy, support businesses, suppliers, and a base of skilled workers. Good community with the regular things that people want in order to live a good lifestyle. You need land to build factories on with water pipes, sewage pipes, good roads, a good transpiration link out into the world, good telephone lines, supplies easily available, etc. The next two biggest things, in my opinion are a pro-world trade, export promotion government. A minimum of government regulations in order to make starting up a business very easy. Develop good relations between the government and business. Make business growth a government priority. Go through any manufacturing directory, 
write out all the major industries then focus on the few that you think your community might be good at. Have the raw materials handy, train the workers and start developing the infrastructure for them. Find the technological niches that you think you can fill on a world level. An industrial cluster is when the area develops a bunch of related industries all together such as cable TV, satellite TV, and the internet, the production of computers, TVs, DVDs, high-definition TVs, home entertainment systems, the various biotech or microelectronic subfields. This is how you make it. You cluster all related industries together in one area. They all help each other and develop a reputation as an area specializing in that sector. I can think of four Silicon Valleys, Palo Alto CA, Austin, Texas, Dublin, Ireland, and Ottawa, Canada. Any successful community or country pays its workers well because this keeps them motivated and happy and it also contributes to the multiplier effect. They buy things with their paychecks thus giving other business owners money who can then expand whatever it is they do and buy consumer goods for their homes. If you pay workers poorly, you will always have a slum and just exploitive companies who will pull out in a minute once the cheap labor, raw materials, and the welcome mat is used up so encourage a win-win situation right from the start where workers are paid fairly so they can raise their standard of living. Any program I've ever seen where governments tried to attract investment by offering cheap labor to the multinationals always failed because that win-win attitude wasn't there. Look at Mexico and Jamaica. Keep all essential utilities like water and bus service run by the government because if you pass it off to private interests, they will try to make a profit at the expense of the people. Let everything else go private enterprise. Help big businesses get going and help them through rough times. Study countries like Japan, Asia, Singapore, Korea, and Taiwan who all built great economies out of almost nothing. Read books on their history of economic development and use some of their ideas. The goal is two things. A highly technological society. Mass consumerism. These two things will give a community wealth and give the people a wide variety of consumer goods and services to spend their money on. You need a strong economic thrust from the highest levels of government. You need a good political process, preferably a democracy. If your country has political dissidents, get rid of them by making the country successful such that people have what they want and don't need to protest. You need a democracy, the opportunity for anyone to add their ideas into the mix. I've seen websites around called Idea Centers. Australia and Norway have one. Check out globalideasbank.org. This will bring ideas to the forefront of your community. Have a website something like smallsvilleideasbank.org and invite anyone to post their ideas for community development there. You need political stability, a pro-business government, very little corruption and an almost invisible military force. Truly prosperous countries are too busy making money and creating cultural centers rather than creating bombs. Focus on tangible consumer and industrial products rather than bombs and warplanes. The infrastructures of great societies. A think tank on business development in the age of global commerce was conducted in my local area a while ago. I attended some of the seminars and here are some of the points I took. On the top of the list, the company wants to know that the local government is pro-business meaning tax incentives and a minimal intrusion of regulations that detract from the business of doing business which are so hellish in some places that any intelligent company wouldn't go there. You must minimize bureaucracy. Develop an organization, forum, or network that brings business and government together regularly to talk, have seminars, plan a vision for the town, socialize, discuss community life, etc. Identify the area's natural resources, core skills available in the workforce, the strength of the infrastructure then get the word out that you got what it takes for companies to locate there and you're aggressively looking for new development. The states of Virginia and North Carolina are great at attracting foreign investment. You could designate a large area a few miles from town limits as an industrial park, lay down sewage pipes, water, etc., Offer easy terms on the sale of the land and advertise in worldwide business media that you want companies to set up shop there. 
create a vision of a progressive future and hammer it into your citizens and the world business community. Keep improving your infrastructure, making a bigger airport, improving the water supply, etc. You need a skilled worker base such that if company Z comes in and needs 50 computer programmers and 50 welders, you can get M right away. You need a good government employment office with a website for this. Fix the road system so there is no great traffic problem. If there's only one bridge and a lot of traffic, build another bridge. Look at other successful commercial and industrial communities. Learn from them. Use their ideas. Keep the business development theme out in the media. Create achievement awards. Publicize business leaders. Help the business community be offering a business library or a business resource center. Create or support the creation of a bar slash restaurant called the Board of Trade where business types can come to eat and drink at reasonable prices. Create a few golf course slash tennis clubs but don't make them elitist just for the business types. Make them for everybody. It all comes down to creating an atmosphere for networking and the exchange of ideas. Develop a custom like a supper and business seminar every three months where people can bring their wives, listen to a business speech, eat then dance for a while. Promote friendly government service in all government functions from education to tourism. Develop an in-depth adult education program where adults can take business, computer, crafts classes, etc. Build community buildings or use the schools at night for recreation and for any social club that wants to strat up and meet there. Start a technical school with training dedicated to the new economy. Build a convention center then bring trade shows in and entertainment venues. Have a website which serves as a local community business resource. Put a chat feature on it. Have a database of local suppliers and their skills. Have a weekly or bi-weekly thing possibly at a bar, board of trade club, where guys with business ideas, new inventions, or new companies can come in and make a presentation about what they're doing while potential investors and partners watch then ask questions and exchange ideas. Better yet, have a local TV show for business ideas. Offer a prize to the best invention. Have a junior achievement local business type club. Invite minority companies and women to feel free to get into business. Have a mentoring program for them. Government financing programs for business usually fail so if you offer loans, don't do them without collateral or only to businesses where the players have put up a bunch of their own money too. I always hear stories about some government somewhere lending some slicksters some money for business development only for that company to go bust. What really happens is that these guys take the money, pretend to develop the company while siphoning the money into their own personal coffers then making an excuse and leaving with the money. Create a civic road show where you invite any local company to make up a booth then you go to other states and countries and set up a businessville trade show where business types come and see what your city is all about business-wise. While it is not the role of government. To form business collaborations, a good government forms the atmosphere for this to happen. Encourage non-profit organizations to set up shop in your community. Try to provide a forum for philanthropists and non-profit organization people to get together and meet. Many companies in your area will set up shop to sell only. Your job is to make the city so appealing that they want to set up production facilities there. Going global as a society. You would think that it's universal that every community wants business development because it brings jobs and money in but this is not true. Many citizens are older, having already made their money and worked their careers or almost finished with them so they don't want their place messed up as they think and there are many eco-environmental people around who don't want any development at all regardless of how much it will help the people earn a better living. You have to be strong enough to either shut these conservatives who don't want any change and these eco-wimps up or live in an area with mostly young people who want economic development because they want to improve their lot in life. If you get the old fogies and eco-wimps in your town organizing to protest the town's ideas of economic development, it might be better to say screw the wimps and move to the next town 8 miles away that might be more amenable to economic development. This is the way it works. You need the support of the community behind you. First off, make a plan. 
identify your strengths and weaknesses, identify your best opportunities and implement pro-business protocols that will make your town slash state slash country attractive to outside investors to want to come in and do business but you have to let them know about it. You do this by advertising. Send press releases to business magazines saying you're a modern town looking for investment from everywhere. Send faxes and emails to every country and regional trade office in the world saying you're looking for investors and have a good infrastructure. Do the same with major multinational corporations and even smaller foreign corporations who might want to get a toehold in your neck of the woods. Next, you have to advertise in business newspapers, business magazines, and put an ad in your regional tourist guide put out by your tourist commission stating how you want business investment. Have a nifty website all set up which you put in all your correspondence and advertising. Hire some guy to tour the major industrial centers of the world, namely Asia and Europe, talk to their government trade officials and ask them to send him to corporations who they think might want to expand to your community. Most of what is manufactured is consumed by the home country so manufacture as much as you can to sell to your own citizens which will minimize importing then specialize in a few things for world exporting markets. Study your competitors in the world market, learn from them then offer better products at better prices than them. Make as many friends and allies as you can on a worldwide scale. Help other countries in order that they help you. Exchange Technology The major trading countries of the world are the United States, Canada, Britain, Japan, Germany, Korea, and maybe China in the future. The more transportation routes, airlines, ships, you can get coming in from these places to your city, the more attractive you will be. Develop amenities geared to international business travelers that make them feel comfortable and welcome. Have good centrally located, moderately priced hotels and try to have a restaurant or hotel where they speak German, Japanese, and Korean to make these people feel at home. Build ties in other countries with a chamber of commerce that at least has a prominent website presence and maybe even an office in some foreign countries. You can get a list of international business magazines in any periodical directory. Put ads in some but also have a ready-made article made up and ask them if they'd like to use it in the magazine. Often, if you buy an ad, they will put the article in. It's filler for them, it means less work for them so many will go for it. Set up a city booth at trade fairs in other countries. Contact economic development agencies in other countries and tell them about your city, offering tours, and information to anyone who's interested. As I already said, be wary of offering business loans but fairly small loans of a few thousand dollars to sincere start UPS or small grants will encourage these small businesses. Just avoid the big companies asking for millions. Make a list of the world's biggest companies, Send them letters telling them what a great place you are for business development and how great your tax breaks are. On your website, put up a directory of all the companies in your area and offer them web space to describe themselves for a few bucks a month or free if you can afford it. Have your local accredited university set up an extensive distance education curriculum, particularly in business to give you publicity worldwide. Invite foreign businessmen, politicians, teachers, etc. to speak with business community and the schools. Support internships of students to local companies and possibly between employees of different companies. Have tours of different companies for the students. Create programs to help girls and older workers get education and encouragement to start new businesses. In the end, build bridges that connect any way you can. Try hashtag 338.9 or HD75 at the library for books about economic development. Create a great society websites. saint onchtoolkitcom slash welcome slash knowledgeassets.htm, three pillars, knowledge architecture, technology infrastructure, and culture. Worldbank.org, article called The Four Pillars of the Knowledge Economy. Paulgram.com slash siliconvalley.html, how to be Silicon Valley. EUKN.org, European Urban Knowledge Network. Knowledge Village Websites. There are only a few knowledge villages in the world but it's a cool concept. The coolest one is in Dubai City, UAE.
it's a big complex of buildings where they invite any educational institution to set up operations there. KnowledgeVillage.in, India KnowledgeVillage.info SmartVillages.org slash Hanstahar, the first knowledge village of India Knowledge-Village.com, KV.ae, Dubai Knowledge Village a place where any established university slash college slash educational institute can offer their services, United Arab Emirates. IT.ae, an educational center in Dubai, providing it and English professional courses. En.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash Dubai underscore knowledge underscore village, the Dubai Knowledge Village is a place where any established university slash college slash educational institute can offer their services. Set up service in no village.com DKVEvents.ae, Dubai Knowledge Village Events. The Music-UAE.com, The Music Institute, Knowledge Village, Dubai. MGUDXBAC.com, Mahatma Gandhi University Off-Campus Center. CEE.AC.ae, Center for Executive Education, Knowledge Village, Dubai. Chapter 2 Community Guide The Good Community The previous chapter defines a prosperous community in the business sense which is basically about having a good infrastructure and advertising heavily to attract industry to set up companies there which is all fine and good for jobs and the multiplier effect for the local economy but there is a line where there is too much industry, too much traffic, too much pollution, too transient a population of workers not entrenched in the community, too much emphasis on production, etc. There are visionary type people who look at communities from a quality of life point of view as opposed to an economic growth point of view and try to identify the ingredients of such a community. Very briefly, some of the factors that make up a good community are as follows. An atmosphere of civility which conjures up in me a friendly, colorful looking town beside a river in the black forest with jolly people, small shops like the butcher, the baker and the candlestick maker, outdoor cafes, nice parks, water fountains, statues and gardens, a beautiful church, a stately old government building, the church bells ringing every hour, the smell of the bakery, people riding bikes, a big town square, etc. A democratically elected local government run by the people for the people. Citizens can attend all meetings and voice their opinions. Have city hall and open, good-looking building where people feel comfortable going to. Have a community website run by the city government. A community that doesn't seem like a dehumanized, commercialized concrete jungle. A sense of a community among the residents. Wide open spaces like parks, sports fields, forests within the city, etc. A homey neighborhood feeling like from the fantasy days of 1950s TV shows. Trees, forests, gardens, and parks in the town, a little bit of country in the city. Little mom and pop shops or strip malls in every neighborhood as opposed to large malls and department stores. Sidewalks, paths through parks, etc. where people can walk, away from traffic and socialize if they want. A central square slash plaza slash common which is like a meeting place for the community where people meet both to socialize and to shop for their daily food kind of like some of the squares in Italy. It's part marketplace, like a farmer's market, and part garden, park, a heritage site and some table and chairs set up for people to picnic or play board games and cards. Another central area people want is something like the Halifax, Nova Scotia Commons, a bunch of sports fields with walkways between them, a water fountain, a roller belating area, a playground, tennis courts, an outdoor swimming pool all right in the middle of the city. Ottawa has a green belt around it, a circular area of forest around the city where no development takes place. London, Ontario has a big park in the middle of the city. Youth service groups such as in Eugene, Oregon called Networking for Youth. These programs give young people a sense of community which rubs off on the way they treat the town in general. There is less crime and vandalism in these areas. Cultural and heritage venues like a music hall, art gallery, museums, nightclubs for live music, libraries, zoos, aquariums, churches, historic buildings, 
cool architecture on commercial and public buildings, etc. Have the schools double as community centers at night for clubs to come meet. Have the library organize an adult education program. Close off some commercial streets to vehicle traffic on the weekends and allow street vendors with a license sell right on the street along with the stores in order to encourage foot traffic. Allow street performers with a license to perform there. A good community too. For the community standard of living issue, several years ago, I read a report about the best places to live in America. On that particular year, Nashua, New Hampshire was number one on the list which kind of surprised me because I thought with those long winters, a place like that wouldn't stand a chance but as long as the weather is not brutal, there are more important things on people's minds namely. A safe place with a low crime rate. Good medical facilities. Good educational facilities. Plenty of recreational parks, centers, and activities. Plenty of churches and other places of worship. A good economy with a low unemployment rate. Good roads, airport, rail, shipping, etc. Good prices and availability of goods. A skilled workforce where you can get what you need done be it computer repair or a welder. If there's a waterfront, put the industry off in one area then build a boardwalk and reclaim the rest of it for the people to use as a combo park boutique shops kinda like the Venice Boardwalk in Los Angeles. Lots of streetlights, some even done up to look like the romantic streetlights from the 18th century. Good social programs to help the addicts, the poor, the homeless, etc. Good water. Low pollution. No smoking policy in public buildings. Bike paths. Good medical care. Few billboards. Very little litter, hefty fine for littering. Good public transportation. Have a twin or sister city in another part of the world who you have cultural exchanges with. Sports complexes and swimming pools. Hiking trails near the city limits. Promote multiculturalism. Have a cultural festival every summer. And the list goes on but you get my drift. There are real things that make one community different from the next. There are books about community life at number 307 or HM 131 at the library. Community values and resources. In an era of commercialization and expansion, many people are concerned about sense of community and community values. Religion, school, and social slash ethnic groups are the most popular ways people keep a sense of community values. Some people like to volunteer in the community, voa.org, volunteermatch.org, or get involved in activism and politics. Some put out a newspaper, easing, radio show, website, newsgroup, community freenet or some other form of media to unite like-minded souls. Try number 307, HM 131, or HN 90 at the library. Social clubs might help fill the need somewhat. Clubs.yahoo.com slash clubs. egroups.com. Groups.yahoo.com. Yahoo.com slash clubs. Yahoo.com slash education slash organization slash alumni underscore I underscore association slash colleges underscore and underscore universities. Yahoogroups.com Some general information about community values can be found at the following websites. Acorn.org, Community Organizations for Reform Now. Alternet.org, Alternative Media. AlternativeLinks.com Apple.com slash a lot, Library of Tomorrow. Artswire.org Aspenzies.com, American Communities. Boulder.co.us slash community slash resources. Calmeadow.com. CCDIA.org, Christian Community Development. Association. CDINet.com, Communications. CDT.org, Democracy and Technology. CDVCA.org, Community Development Venture. Capital Alliance. CDC.org, Community Economic. Development Assistance Corp. CED.NS.CA. SEDWORKS.COM, Center for Community. Enterprise, 
sells books on the subject. CFED.org, Corporation for Enterprise Development CFIN.org, Child Slash Family Interactive Network City.net Civic.net CNT.org, Center for Neighborhood Technology Com-Dev.org, Community Development Society Com-Org.Utilito.edu, Community Organizing CommunityCapital.org CommunityChange.org Contact.org Coop.org Coop.org slash ICA, International Coop Alliance COSCDA.org, Council of State Community Development Agencies CPSR.org, Computer Programmers for Social Responsibility CRFUSA.com, 800 Four seven five three zero five zero Community Reinvestment Fund CSH.org Corp for Supportive Housing CSN.net Community Stories EFF.org Electronic Frontier Foundation EnterpriseFoundation.org Envirolink.org ESIC.org Enterprise Social Investment Corporation Nonprofit Housing Essential.org EWG.org Environment GOV.NS.CA slash ESER slash pub slash set guide GrassrootsOnline.org FAIR.org Fairness in Media FED.org Habitat.org Habitat for Humanity Builds Houses for Poor People Home.net hrdia-ltd.ns.ca ica-group.org businesses in low income areas igc.org global communications islandpress.org relevant books ix.net/cix community networking librarynet.org listcnet.org local initiative support coalition LivingDemocracy.org MacFDN.org, MacArthur Foundation Marino.org NACAA.org, Community Action Agencies NACSED.org, National Association for County Community and Economic Development NADO.org, National Association of Development Organizations NCBN.org, National Community Building Network NCDAonline.org, National Community Development Association NCHM.org, Housing Management NCook.K12.IL.US, Community Model NCRC.org, National Community Reinvestment Coalition NDC-Online.org, National Development Council NetLC.org, Economic Development and Law Center Nefink.org, National Equity Fund, Low Income Housing Tax Credits NeighborhoodCoalition.org NPTN.org, Public Telecomputing Network NW.org, NeighborWorks OUP.org, 800-245-2691, Work Study Program with HUD PBS.org, Public TV PolicyLink.org Privacy.org RCAC.org, Rural Community Assistance Corp RDFC.org, Rural Development and Finance Corp SANetwork.org, Sustainable America SCN.org, Sustainable Seattle SCN.org slash IP slash ComNet Community Network Movement Socialcompact.org Mission is to get Corporations to help poor neighborhoods Socialinvestment.ca Umich.edu slash community Urban.org Washington.edu slash research slash comuni Timeworks Well.com slash www slash cmty Wunia.org What's new in activism? 
womensednet.ns.ca woodstockinsd.org National Congress for Community Economic Development 877-446-2233-202-289-9020 nccet.org Nonprofit organization committed to the Development of economically distressed rural and urban communities. The goal, a virtual community website. The goal of any big website is to inform people about your cause and offering interesting content to unite the people and raise their awareness about what's going on in the world. An activist website tries to be a virtual community, a place where like minded people go to connect with others and pick up some tidbits of knowledge about their area of interest, whatever it might be. You should have several features like a news group, chat room, an experts corner where you can ask questions, a feedback icon, some entertainment like trivia games or jokes, some educational archives, even a page for personal ads. If you treat people well by filling up your website with free, interesting things, they will be more attracted to your cause. In my opinion, running a virtual community through an internet service provider is expensive. Rather than renting space from a website hosting company, buy a server, hook it up in a room and let that be your connection to the world. People are emotional and as such, they're sociable. They want community and need it. Activism is emotion. Create it through a virtual community in your subject area. Supply educational information in the form of a number of articles but the critical thing is to supply the social atmosphere where people can talk amongst each other in cyberspace, a kind of counterculture of your type of people. Make it a place people want to go to. Create a grassroots portal for your cause. As a non-profit organization, you have the right to sell certain things to try to raise money or start a for-profit spin-off company to make money. Sell music CDs books, t-shirts, etc. all related to your cause. Try hashtag 001 hashtag point zero zero four or hashtag 303.48 and TK5105 at the library for books about the internet. Virtual Community Guide There are basic rules about how any successful group or organization operates. As a field of study, this area is sometimes called organizational behavior, organizational management, or industrial psychology. Applied psychology books are at number 158 at the library. You might find a few industrial psychology books in the business section at hashtag 650.1 or HF5548. The major rules of groups are as follows. Successful groups have a clear vision and serve a clear purpose. Have good leaders allow input from the members and provide a gathering place to congregate and communicate. Include ways for group members to communicate with each other by providing a chat room and an email address directory of members with a little bio profile with or without picture of every member who wants to be listed. You might also offer mailing lists, message boards, chat rooms, etc. A member profile contains the following basic information with an optional photo if you want. Name, handle, location, email address, birth date, sex, marital status, hobbies, occupation, favorite quote, religion, would like to meet. Strong leadership is often the catalyst that makes the group strong, lively, and relevant. Acknowledge those leaders and give them the means to do their thing. Groups have their own etiquette where the members are comfortable at, membership requirements, code of conduct, etc. Community events are the glue that unifies the group and makes it stronger. Have regular meetings, invite guest speakers, etc. Offer your groups an events calendar, a public forum where they can hold their events and the means to promote, run, and transcribe their events. Groups like traditional rituals of community life like marriages, having kids, new jobs, promotions at work, etc. Have a bulletin board where members can post the personal events of their lives. Good groups break down into subgroups when some people want to go off in their own direction within the group. Groups have their own lives and life cycles. Let whatever happens happen naturally. 
you have to develop a structure of people to run your community network. You will need to decide whether to fill the positions with volunteers, independent contractors for a fee or paid staff. Volunteers are often compensated with occasional gifts. If you're running a small, not-for-profit community like a place for people interested in improving their lives, you will naturally turn to volunteers but if you're selling products while offering this self-help community, you have to decide whether you want a completely professional staff or hire a few professionals who oversee a volunteer pool. If you expect to have such a mix, get a few good paid leaders to run the show. This saves the uncertainty of dealing with volunteers. If a volunteer is a slacker, the paid community administrator just has to get rid of him and bring in another one. Some responsibilities of running a chat room slash bulletin board slash news group slash community are Greet newcomers Show them the site Answer questions Get them involved Oversee the core activities Be the leader slash moderator slash host in organized activities as opposed to a free-flowing chat Choose content, evaluate content offered to you by the community Be a sensor of sorts Bring in the good, get rid of the old, tired, bad stuff. Remove people and slash or content that's in bad taste. Teach members to lead at times when they're in the community. Create a short motto that identifies the group's purpose like people helping people live better lives. Create a longer mission statement that explains what the group is all about like the people's vision. Write up a short history of the group, how it came to exist etc. and then talk about who you are now, what you do and what services you offer. Create a welcome package that's sent to new members to enable them to get around the community. Create an organizational structure, a list of leadership roles within the group, along with their powers and responsibilities. Provide training and instruction for volunteers who want to be group leaders. Create a place to announce the group's membership requirements, its code of conduct and a group calendar for upcoming events. Coordinate events, run them. Answer questions about the community. Create a leader seniority program where you offer good volunteers who help out some kind of discount on your products, free gifts every few months, etc. Have seminars with guest speakers, keep it on topic. Conduct classes and training sessions. Have one-to-one -one tutoring with volunteers. Evaluate students through written exams or interactive sessions. Coordinate events. Promote them by putting them on the calendar and sending out emails. Post transcript of seminars, newsgroup archives, etc. Answer technical or social questions on a forum reserved for that. Update the community frequently. Have an FAQ room, frequently ask questions. Hold group meetings. Reward good leaders with commendation. Define roles and responsibilities of leader positions. Have an application form, manual, and code of conduct for volunteer leaders. Offer a place for members to post their photographs. Offer photographs of whatever it is you're into. The idea is to create a tribe slash community of like-minded people who enjoy the atmosphere of being there. Advertise well so people from all over the world come on over. Do some activist work through your website. Virtual community resources. Try number 307 or HM 131 at the library. 321website.com. Bbomb.com, software. Bakinfo.com. Bulletinboards.com. Caucussystems.com. Civicnet.org, Center for Civic Networking. Clubs.yahoo.com. Communities.com CommunityZero.com Start an online community Delphi.com Discussware.com Software eBay.com Slash help slash community values dot html eCircles.com ICQ.com iVillage.com Slash relationship KOZ.com Macromedia.com Slash flash Microsoft.com slash SQL, database system. MyEvents.com. MySQL.com, database system. Naima.com.
NPTN.org, info at NPTN.org, Freenets. PeopleLink.com, private chat rooms. PeoplePanel.com. Publish.com slash features slash 9902 slash ID slash ID main. RemarQ.com. TC.ca. Thinkofit.com slash webconf. UO.com. VCN.bc.ca slash people slash NKG slash ma hyphen thesis. Virtual-memorials.com have games and tournaments. WAJones.org. Webmaster.com. Wellengage.com. Exum.com, communities. Beliefnet.com, religion. Tehewell.com, political, activist. ZED.CBC.CA slash open source.